and forth. Uh, and we were pushing it really hard. Uh, but you know, one, one of the most marvelous examples of PR fell in our laps when, when I actually went to see this movie with Richard Dawkins. And they threw me out. <laughs> this is a movie called Expelled. It's about people being thrown out of academia because they don't hold the right beliefs. And you know, th th this was an amazing act of hypocrisy that I could go to this movie and they would throw me out. And the best bit of all is that Richard Dawkins didn't get thrown out at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, I was telling everybody that I was the scary one, not Richard Dawkins. This, this, was, this was a great boost to my ego. But anyway, the, the point was that this was the kind of thing that we had to do, is we had to get out there and make a stink. Richard Dawkins then writes a scathing review of the movie. I wrote a scathing non-review of the movie. <laughs> And for a while, for like three days, my, my blog post was the most linked post in the entire blogosphere. Everybody was reading this thing. It made the newspapers. It was in the New York Times. So that's a great thing. That's, that's a powerful tool that, yeah, it made everybody aware of this movie, but at the same time made them aware of what frauds and hypocrites these people were. So that's useful. Let's do that. Let's keep on making noise about these movies. The other thing I was going to do is, is I'm, going to, I'm going to show you the one clip of the movie I've seen. Uh, it's, it's actually the best part of the movie because it stars me. Uh, you know, Richard Dawkins is pretty good at it, but most of the movie it seems is shots of his nostril. They, 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 they did some really bizarre camera work. So I'm going to show you the short clip of my movie, and you're jumping up here like there might be something wrong. Okay, we'll check the audio. We'll hope the audio will work. Anyway, this is, this is the, the piece of the movie where I'm just trying to describe what I think will happen to religion. Biologist P.Z. Myers, who runs the pro-Darwin, anti-religion blog for Ringula, says science eroded his faith as well. I never hated religion. I found religion quite comfortable, and I liked the people in it. Uh, what led to the atheism was learning more about science, learning more about the natural world, and seeing these horrible conflicts with religion. And it was then, when I discovered evolution, when I discovered Darwinism, that I realized that this magnificent elegant, stunningly elegant explanation, um, which I didn't quite understand to begin with. When I did understand it, then that finally killed off my religion. <laughs> religion is, is an idea that gives some people comfort, and we don't want to take it away from them. It's like, it's like knitting. People like to knit. We're not going to take their knitting needles away. We're not going to take away their churches. Uh, but what we have to do is get, get into a place where religion is treated at the level it should be treated. That is something fun that people get together and do on the weekend and really doesn't affect their life as much as it has been so far. So what would the world look like if Dr. Myers got his wish? Greater science literacy, which is going to lead to the erosion of religion. And then we'll get this nice positive feedback mechanism going, where as religion slowly fades away, we get more and more science to replace it. And that will displace more and more religion, which will allow more and more science in. And we'll eventually get to that point where religion has taken that appropriate place as, as you know, a side dish rather than the main course. And if you separate out the ethical message from religion, what have you got left? Yeah, you got a bunch of fairy tales, right? I think that God is about as unlikely as fairies, angels, uh, hobgoblins, etc. Religion, I mean, it's just fantasy, basically. It's completely empty of any explanatory content. And it's evil as well. Okay, and then, then apparently after this they cut to scenes of tanks rolling through Moscow and goose-stepping Nazis. But anyway, that, uh, that was my part of the movie. My mother was kind of disappointed, you know, she thought I'd have a starring role at least, but no, there, there was like less than a minute of me in the movie. But anyway, um, that's kind of my attitude toward, towards religion is, is, you know, that isn't so nasty, is it? That I, I mean, I'm not out to... Uh, discriminate against people or tell them that they can't believe whatever they want to believe. But I think that there's an appropriate place for religion and it's not in dominating political discourse. It is not as a tool for deciding what you're going to do in the real world. That it's a, it's the, the real problem is that people take religion a little bit too seriously. And I'd like to see that end.
And the only way we can do that, of course, is by going on the offensive and pointing out the absurdities of religion at every opportunity. Now, one, one peculiar bit of fallout from this particular sequence uh, is that I got a lot of hate mail for this. Now, apparently, when, when this is shown in theaters, I heard from accounts from other people that people just gasped at what I said, just in horror. It was horrible. Uh, and, but I didn't give any email from creationists. Or, you know, I got a lot of email from knitters who were very upset <laughs> that, that I, I had dared to com compare such a... See there? I, I really have nothing against knitting, okay? It was, just, it was just what came to mind when I was talking to these guys. It's off the top of my head. And I've, I've realized since that I've got to come up with a better analogy. Uh, then crochet. No, that, that, that crochet is the acronym. So I, I thought of one, and, and, and I think religion ought to be thought of more like masturbation. <laughs> now, this, this, is, this is not saying a bad thing about religion. Okay, I'm, I'm liberal. I think there's nothing wrong with masturbation. That, that, but the, the, what we want is to get religion to the level where we compare it appropriately to masturbation in many ways. Which is that, you know, first of all, we recognize that, yeah, religion feels good and so does masturbation, right? That, that's a given. Lots of people enjoy religious practices and that, that's just fine. Some people get into the Catholic rituals, for instance. Uh, some people like to speak in tongues, okay. Well, whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oppress them with that. And, and of course, the other thing is that lots of people do this. <laughs> let's, just, let's just recognize this as a Pretty common universal, although I, I, would, I think it's pretty clear that masturbation is much more common than religion. <laughs> I bet you there's a few atheists who masturbate. Just, just um, but the important thing is that we all agree that public exhibitions... <laughs> uh, same with religion. You know, go to, go to a church. <laughs> that the floor of the Senate is probably not the appropriate place to do these kinds of displays. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the really important thing is that enthusiasm for the practice is not a qualification for the <laughs> So, you know, this, this puts Sarah Palin in a whole new perspective. Right? <laughs> so, um, we, we need to get it to this point. And like I said, this, this is not to disparage religion. It's, it's, it's fine that people want to do this, but it's got an appropriate place. And how are we going to do this? Well, I, I presume there's a lot of atheists here, and many of you have already done the first step, which is, is something that Richard Dawkins has urged, is simply come out. Just make it known. You know, if you get one of those I love PZ buttons, it's going to be assumed that you're one of my kind, right? So, or, or, or anything, just, just don't be afraid to admit it that uh, I, I've run into many cases where I've talked to people and they, they've said this, that you know, if, if they mention that they are an atheist in a, in, a, in a conversation, it just stops a cold and people treat them like they're diseased or something. But that shouldn't stop you from saying it anyway. Go ahead, make it clear. Don't be ashamed. Uh, what we've got to do is we've got to make people aware that we're out there and that they have to reconcile themselves to our existence. Right now, many people pretend that they don't know of any atheists. And they will say they have never met an atheist when they're surrounded with them. You know, in the United States, we're, we're about 5% of the population. It's more like 15% if you include people who are at least willing to say they're agnostic or don't belong to an organized religion. I understand it's a little higher in Canada. So keep it up. Just keep saying these things. The other thing is, is that what we need to do is we may need to make people think. And we need to make them question their beliefs. Uh, it's kind of a hot picture, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this, this is a painting by uh, Becky Jane Harrelson, as it mentions, and it's, it's Judas's kiss of Jesus. And uh, there was a, a group in Ohio, an atheist group, and they decided to use this as, as a sign, a recruiting sign. And so they made a little sign that says, okay, Jesus Christ had a homosexual relationship. And they displayed this in their student union. Uh, I thought it was marvelous. You know, first of all, I kind of suspect that Jesus, if he actually existed, probably wasn't homosexual. He was, he, was, he was probably a crazy Jewish rabbi who had some rather peculiar beliefs, and they probably excluded homosexuality. 
But I kind of suspect that he might have been a repressed homosexual 